happened. And it was actually after, I, th- I don't even know. I was so embarrassed. I don't even know what my time was, but it was something like four hours and 20 minute marathon, which when you're trained for Boston, 420 for quite a few people is amazing. But when you're training for a certain time and you're so down on yourself and it's silly and I see a woman with her dog on the beach running her dog and it's like that light bulb moment. And I thought, huh, I've always been a huge dog lover. I'm a runner. I wonder if this is something that exists. So I did my research didn't see anything, at least anything that anyone was promoting in San Diego. Did my due diligence. I did whatever research I felt necessary to start. And it went from there. It was an easy process, but I wanted it to be a career decision that I could really make something out of people's lives. Not about just making money. It's about can I get dogs fit? Can, is this something that I could be on to? Because I don't see anything. I see dog walkers all the time. What I didn't know then was that it wasn't just going to be running dogs, that it was going to be relationships, that it was going to be dogs who are going to hide in a corner because they're too scared because they were beat at the ranch before they came to this owner. Mm-hmm. You have no clue what you're getting into, but I took that leap and I just, I cannot believe I did it. I'm so, so proud of what it's become, and I love the people that I've met, and there's been some clients that I've only run their dog once, and I met them. It was a one and done, and that's fine, but they opened their world to me for that one time, and it was just, it's just, it's that cool. That was Kimberly Weeks, and this is the Yogi Triathlete Podcast. Welcome back, you guys, to episode 107 of the YTP. This is the spot where every week we share stories of people looking, finding, and living their purpose. Why is it that we can do this show after show? From doctors to athletes to authors to nutritional junkies, it just seems that everyone we are connected with has this unique story of purpose in their life. Well, You guys, it's because they're not special. They're just here living what we're all here to live. Yeah, we all have purpose. And I don't believe there's just one. I believe that there's purpose for us to find and live in every single moment. You know, we're not just randomly placed here to go through the emotions. We are here to be fully expressed. And that is the ultimate purpose for all us humans. So how do we find this purpose? We start by paying particular attention to what we love. And if we don't love anything, then back up the truck because there must be something that you like in this life. Maybe it's the job you're in, the weekend chores around the house, organizing your closet, riding your bike, lacing up your shoes and pounding the pavement. Look closely at your life and be in notice of what brings you joy and then do more of that because you never know where it's going to lead you. Just because something hasn't happened yet doesn't mean that it's not going to or that it's not already on its way. If you have a vision for your life, live that vision every single day. Get into the feel of that life and know that in a world of quantum physics, there is no waiting game. Everything is instantaneous. And this world is a boomerang. So if we have hopes, goals, dreams for our future, but then we smack those downs with thoughts that they can never happen then guess what? They will never happen. And you know, nothing happens to you, but it happens for you. There is something always to learn in every single moment. And in the story of our guest today, the unfolding of her purpose came in the midst of a poor me pity party. That's right. Kimberly was low vibing over a disappointing marathon time when an aha moment slid into her awareness and she paid attention to it. Not only did she pay attention to it, But she put that inspiration from the aha moment that she received that day into action and has now transformed that moment into a thriving and growing profession where she is playing catalyst to massive change in the lives of many. Kimberly is the founder of Race Pace Pups, a dog running business here in San Diego, born from two of her loves, running and dogs. Listening to her heart has led her to so much more than a paycheck. It's relationships, it's healing, and it's a heck of a lot of miles. 
This girl is putting down 60 to 70 miles a week in prep for her upcoming marathon. She knows that there'll be no taper, but she doesn't care. In fact, everything that used to hold her back from joy in running has literally washed away since putting purpose to her pace. This convo is so much more than miles. It's about passion, balance, consistency, and the willingness to start again and again and again. And it's also about plants. Yes, Kimberly reports that when she is 100% plant-based, her body feels and performs better. Of course we love to hear this, right? Everyone loves to hear positive things about what they believe in. But regardless of what your diet looks like, I think we can all agree that incorporating more fruits and veggies is beneficial. All right, one more piece of amazing info before we dive in. I am super pumped to welcome Laura Shenyer to Team Yogi Triathlete. You may remember Laura from a few episodes ago just after becoming an Ironman for the first time. Well, we are so psyched to say that as of today, she is also an official YT. We were connected with Laura on the mat last fall, and Coach BJ will be prepping her to crush the Marine Corps Marathon in the fall, and then on to, well... I'm just going to go ahead and say another 140.6 because this yogi has incredible talent and potential in multi-sport. So our team of badasses just became one more strong. If you are resonating with the vibe, shoot us a message and let's get the convo started. Our team is growing constantly and we'd love to have you at the starting line with us this season. Yogi Triathlete has grown into a global community of like-minded people who are going after their fullest in life and they are learning to ride the waves like masters. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And now let's dive into our convo with a woman, mom, and entrepreneur who is running with purpose every single day. Race Pace Pops top dog, Kimberly Weeks. All right, so you're a sweet cashew cream addict. I love it. Start, let's just start there. Okay. You brought your you brought your Yogi Triathlete cookbook over to the podcast today. I'm a fan. And anytime you go to open it, it opens right up to the sweet cashew cream. <laughs> so we know that you've been like you've been spending some time on that page. What do you put it on? I put it on my favorite Ezekiel bread. Toast it. Slap that on. Maybe even a little bit of sliced banana. Add a little bit of shredded coconut, and I'm good. Oh my God, that sounds. I never <laughs> even thought about putting that on toast. Oh, Ezekiel bread, the sesame, it's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Oh, that sounds amazing. And then you've been doing the recovery smoothie. Which I need often for all the running that I do, yeah. day in, day Sister, out. Sister, you put down some serious miles every week. Like I do. 60, let's 70 talk miles numbers. a week. Yeah, let's talk numbers. Let's oh, talk geez. numbers, girl. Let's turn on some numbers. Well, it's all about the dogs that I run. And because I run so many dogs, I obviously put a lot of miles on this body. And sometimes it's road, sometimes trail sometimes beach, and I need the recovery smoothie. <laughs> is all your running done with dogs? No, but most of it is now. I used to run primarily for myself, and about two years ago I started this beautiful business, Race Pace Pups, where I am a dog runner, and I have devoted so much of my time to these beautiful creatures, and they get my legs. They own my legs now. <laughs> Your legs are beautiful, by the way. I was Thank you. <laughs> coveting them as you walked in the door. Yeah. I was like, damn, those legs are strong. <laughs> so, all right. So you've been a runner for a while, though. How did you, like, what was running to you? Did you grow up running? Actually, I, <clears throat> I'd say I've been running only about five years now. Um, I grew up as a soccer player. I played Division One soccer. I was molded to be a soccer player. And I was that soccer player who was gifted. However, I hated running. So I am that person who hated running as a kid through college. And somehow about five years ago, I thought my body can do this. And I laced up, I went out, couldn't even do a quarter of a mile. I was huffing and puffing and I didn't quit. And I kept at it and I kept at it. And then it was a half mile, then it was a mile, and then it kind of clicked my body, and I took ownership. And then I signed up for a 5K. Uh, it was Thanksgiving, I still remember. Forest old, Ranch, it was old, Forest Ranch. Good old turkey trot, we'll do it. It was, and I ran it in about 27 minutes, and I remember I was alone. I went to look at the results. I was told there was going to be results posted, and this is something new to me. So I started from the very bottom, and I was looking for my name, thinking I'd be at the bottom of my age group, and I kept going up, and I kept going up, and I was fourth place. And I was like, whoa, okay, I'm pretty good at this. That's and that awesome. was it, and it went from there. 
So, you know, I bet growing up being a soccer player, because I'm thinking about all that lateral movement and just develop so as you're like growing. Speed, the speed burst. So you're like right. running to get to the ball, then you kick in, then you're like waiting to see what happens. Yep. Yeah. But like building, building stability and like durability through your hips as like as a young child and then like I don't think you lose that because that's just like your structure you know and I so many runners were just especially triathletes were so linear actually I yeah. saw this machine the other day I went on it at the gym and I was like so conservative it goes like was it, it the goes side like, to side yeah it's like yeah. This elliptical yeah. yeah I'm afraid of that I was afraid of it but I was like all right I'm not going to be afraid of you like I'm nice. going to step right into this nice. fear and I'm going to do job. it and I just did it for like 15 minutes but did you stick so your butt cool. out my coach told me, stick your butt out yeah, when you go on that. there was all these, like, I was totally <laughs> the new girl. Like, like I'd never been to the gym before. I was, like, kind of looking around. Well, we like, haven't because we've been out of the gym world for a while. We, yeah. Which is wonderful. When we met, we yeah. were in the gym, like, Aww. clinging weights. We were clinging were weights. Were you? Yeah. We do, like, And the rest is history, body. right? Like, 10 minutes of cardio, and then it was, like, an hour yeah. of like, dumbbells. <laughs> it was, like, <laughs> upper body, lower body, like, 20 seconds of core. Hey, whatever it takes, right? right exactly. And then that's what uh, that's all it took for you to. Oh, that's great. So where did you play Division One soccer? So I was recruited to play out in Texas. Uh, it was a new program for Stephen F. Austin State School out in Texas. And I was the California girl celebrity because that was about a 90, I believe it at the time it was a 90 to 95% in-state school. And this is deep East Texas. I'm from San Diego. I trained on the beach and I showed up thinking I was in shape. No problem. I can take this. And I couldn't even do half a mile. I was dead. It was so hot and humid. Oh, yeah. And that wasn't my reality. I was out at seven in the morning in San Diego thinking, well, this is hot. Not at all. Right. <laughs> Not at all. And I, uh, I was real fortunate to have the opportunity to play out in Texas and to play against some of these schools um, in the Midwest also in the South and to see a complete different way of life coming from San Diego, driving through, say, Mississippi. And as an 18-year-old girl from here... It was quite a shock. And you're so Southern California. You've got the blonde hair. You have like this beautiful tan. But I spent a good part of my <laughs> 20s living and working in New York City, which Whoa. is my love. I absolutely love that city. And I'm really looking forward to... I just turned 40 a couple weeks ago, and I am running the New York City Marathon in yeah. November. Yay. So cool. excited. And I'm, I was actually asked to run for a rescue group, a dog rescue group called Rescue Freedom Project. They are based out of L.A., and they approached me about uh, joining their team of, I believe, five, that they have five slots. And as the dog runner, I was asked to be a part of their team and... I was near tears. I didn't even know what to say. I'm so excited to fundraise for them and just be a part of this world. And what are they, what are they all about? They, oh man, it's a hard one. Um, There's so many wonderful rescue groups out there. They rescue dogs that are, I wasn't aware that beagles are the breed of choice for lab testing. So it could be your toothpaste, it could be your shampoo, but they have dogs that are bred to be lab testing animals. I had no idea, and I had I've been in the dog world, I guess you could say, for close to two years now. And to learn something like this and to watch on their website their YouTube video of their first rescue, I was just takes a lot for me to really, really tear up. Oh, it had me. Mm -hmm. So I'm just so thankful and blessed to be a part of this with them. But now I'm going to have to start training. So have you I run? think you've got the base <laughs> mileage down, though. Have you run a marathon before? I trained for two, okay. uh, two marathons that I ran just before starting this business. And I was trained to qualify for Boston. I had it in the bag. And both times I missed by about 45 minutes. I was awful. I was <laughs> awful. I just psyched myself out both but you times. Were, it sounds like you were solid in training. Like oh, all the signs absolutely. were pointing yeah, towards you. Well, you know it's a bad sign when you're a long run uh, in training. It's faster than your race. That's not supposed to happen. So how did. did you psych yourself out? Let's dig into Mental. The, I've yeah. always just... I have had an issue since starting running with my competitive nature 
that I have to be better, faster. And it's silly because I was never going to be a professional, but I have this mentality and I always have. Well, I think type A, there's so many people that are listening to this podcast right now that are like, yeah, I get that. Like, and so that's why I wanted to dig into that, like that psyching out. So do you think you, you put so much pressure on yourself? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And you heard that we were just talking about Suzanne Davis's story. Like yeah. she psyched herself out of the Olympic qualifications. And I'm just a regular lady who happens to be okay at running. So Everybody out there who's listening now that considers themselves just another, just another runner, you're not. You can do it. Just work on the mental game. That was my problem until I started my business. Now, what little running I do personally, I have no issues. It's so interesting to see everything kind of washed away. How? Like, when did it? Yeah, is it because... I mean, you have all these dogs. So you're running for the dogs. There's yes. really no like... It's like you're in service per- of yeah. them. I am. They get my body during the week. And occasionally on the weekends, I'll want to race. I still want to. I'm nowhere near as fast as I was a couple years ago. And that's fine. But I know what a difference I've made in these families' lives. And some of the dog owners that have come to me and told me just what I've done to not only change their dog, but their their family and it's just yes I love it so do you think it's the like you've gone in a sport from you were a super talented soccer player you hated running hated it yeah and then but you're like then you jump into this 5k and you're realizing like okay I'm kind of good at this I should do this but then that competitiveness comes up but now you've got purpose like right. now you kind of have Absolutely. shifted. And that's my mentality now too. I have purpose. I have a mission. Whereas before, yeah, I was running for myself and I knew I was a very talented athlete uh, in my previous life, I guess you could say. And now I started running for myself. I was too, I just psyched myself out and it's ridiculous, but I don't think anybody can really tell you not to do that. You have to figure it out yourself, how to flip that switch and just release. Yeah. There's no, there's no manual. There's no, no manual that says, not at all. Here's what you do when you, <laughs> you put all the pressure is on and you just step back and now you're going to have a great race. Like right. everybody's unique, but we, ha- we talk about this all the time with expectations. You set that time goal mm-hmm. where you set, you see signs in training, right? You see signs and you want to put all of your eggs in one basket. Like, okay, I've got this. I've got this. This is awesome. This is, everything is pointing towards it and you attach to that end goal. And then when the end goal doesn't happen, like, wow. Like we all, I I think a lot of our listeners can relate to just having all those expectations and then finally it doesn't happen. So then what? Yeah. Then what? Like what's next? Like, wow. So I put in all this time and effort and I didn't attain my goal. So then unworthiness pops in, right? It's like, oh my God, I shouldn't even it's be so running. It's so easy to go down the negative totally. path and you just have to figure it out. You have to figure it out yourself, how to get past that. And it's so much easier said than done. It's tough. It was tough. And it I think tough. I wouldn't be surprised if I would still have the same mentality if I wasn't running dogs now. I know it sounds silly, but... I don't even think age has anything to do with it. I think it's because my focus is so on dogs that when I show up to a race and I don't do as well, okay, I'm not nervous before anymore. Yeah, because I, I saw you before. We saw you before Encinitas. the Encinitas half. That was so fun. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. And hey, Liz, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We were out there. Liz was here for uh, for an epic training weekend. Her and I were getting I ready for the Mendocino. Yes. Um, that was super fun. And we randomly ran into you at Whole Foods. And then we ran into you oh, that, that morning. So cool. And there were so many times between us landing here and connecting on yeah. um, social and then you coming over and helping us with Clark and then that was like love at first sight. Literally on his back <laughs> on your bed that was my introduction to your dog. And, and it was I like it was it. soon after we saw you we started like <laughs> And every single person that listens to this has to follow Race Pace Pups because Kimberly's photos are amazing. Like all, I mean, they all about the dogs. Yeah, literally capture the action shots. It's like I don't either. Like the camera, you just put the you're like running, but the camera's like down. You're not really looking at it because the pup is like in action mode. Like I think I've just 
I've gotten lucky. I keep my phone away, obviously, for most of the run, but sometimes... Sometimes if, you're ha if you have a break with a dog, that's where you'll get a cute little picture. But then sometimes right when you start back up, hit a couple, put the phone away, hope for the best. Sometimes I'll get like half an ear. You're like, dang, <laughs> I, it happens often. And, you know, I could post those pictures, but <laughs> I think people like to see the entire dog and not yeah, just the they're, ear. Yeah, they're awesome <laughs> photos. And so if anyone is oh. like coming off a crappy race or a horrible training session, just go to Race Pace Pups and you'll feel so much better. You will smile. And you, I yeah. am blessed to have so many wonderful dogs that I run. Unfortunately, not all of them are on social media because not everybody wants their dog on there. And I understand. However, the ones on are just they're so lovable. <laughs> Everybody has their own story. <laughs> We're like, if you're just pulling it up right now, it is, it's hysterical. Who's, who's the sweetheart that always comes Rose. up? Rose. Is that Rose? Oh, Rose, the Cocker Rose Spaniel e. that yes. I love. Rose, she is wonderful. And she is that runner who maybe doesn't want to run in the beginning. She might need a little coaxing. I know how many of us can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> and once she gets going, she's happy and she smiles, but she has these eyes sometimes where she's saying, can we just stop? But her body tells us otherwise and she runs and it's so cute. And I just love her. Well, I think one of the things that I love, I start every day with taking Clark outside to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And <laughs> it's one of my favorite parts of the day for a couple of reasons. Number one, I get like the cool air on my face and it wakes me up a little bit. But the other thing that I love is we have this routine. I take him out. He's like still in his jammies, no collar, no nothing. And he walks out and he's like right behind me. He's just, it's like, it's like he is the most obedient in that, in that morning little and it's quiet journey that we have. Cool. Yeah. I, mean, I can hear the waves at the yeah. end because we just live so close to the beach. We're so lucky. You are. And so then I get to a point where I get just to the sidewalk and I look left and I look right and I make sure that the road is clear. And then I say, okay, go. And he just, he'll go from sleepy face, bed head, and he just charges <laughs> across the street. And there's no story. There's no baggage. There's no, um, I have to take it slow because yesterday I went for that long run and my, my hips are tight. Like he just goes and happily. That's what I love so much about yeah. him. He reminds me to just wake up every morning and take each moment as brand new like he does and not carry all this baggage and these stories into every day because they are present moment awareness. It's so simple, isn't it? Yeah. So Life can, can be so simple. It is so simple. It's that just our mind wants to overcomplicate things. And it's just that our mind is, everything that our mind is um, working, how it works in the present moment is kind of pulling from past old files. Like everything is from the past. We build um, our ideals about experiences and what we see in the world and how different things are going to feel and look and taste based on our experience in the past. And so it's my understanding that dogs actually don't have that frontal lobe. And I didn't learn this from like a, a dog scientist. I learned it from my meditation teacher. Um, that he says that he told me that they don't have this frontal lobe, so they don't have the me center. Hmm. So they don't have the my hips, my hamstring, my bad ankle, my left shoulder. It's I love, let's go, yeah, let's it's play. Just, it's present moment. They yeah. don't have that me center. It's I mean, it's instinct. They're it makes all sense. in instinct. But they're, which is why it makes sense that when we leave for several hours and we come home, they're excited to see us. That they don't punish us because, oh, well, last time you left, you left me too long, right? <laughs> like, it's just so cool. I but Clark wouldn't do that anyway. Clark wouldn't do that He's anyway. He's a sweetie. Yeah. And so what, what have the dogs taught you? Oh, my goodness. Patience. <laughs> <laughs> They go to the bathroom often, some of them. Dang it. That's why I get paid. <laughs> They're just friendly, wonderful creatures who have taught me to be a better person. I know it sounds cliche, but they have. And it's just like I was saying a minute ago, everything is so simple when you're with a dog. And our life can be, we need to dial it down a bit. And I think that... Um, spending time with dogs has just taught me to just be in the present moment and live now. And that was an interesting story you said about the no frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of that, but it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And just live now. Mm -hmm. It's, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. And so you learn, you learn it because you, 
you have to practice it when you're with them because like you might be in a good groove and they've got to stop. Right. And that's okay. And that's okay. So you learn I'm here there. for the, I'm here for them. But I'm assuming like you've, like we don't selectively learn. So you've taken this into your life. Right. right? And so where have you seen change in maybe the way that you relate to your family or even the way that you relate to sports or whatever it may be that this lesson, this lesson of patience, let's just stick with patience. <laughs> like how is that? Translated? I have an eight and a six year old. So yeah. well, it really again, ties it's about in. progress, not perfection. Oh, you know, what's really cute is that my, my kids feel that they're a part of this. I don't even want to call it a gig anymore. It's my passion. I absolutely love them. This is my mission and they're a part of it. And although you won't see them, I choose to keep them separate. Um, they know every dog. They've met a few of my dogs too. And they, they almost know my lineup every day. My daughter before school, she'll be eating breakfast and say, okay, mommy, so today you have this, this, and this. And then don't, in the afternoon, don't you have to go see this dog? Yes, yes, yes. She knows. She's got, she's got my uh, schedule. She's my assistant. And she has asked if she could run dogs for me. And I said, no, <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> this is not for fun. Although it is fun. I, uh, I have this protective bubble around each dog that I'm with for that half hour, hour, whatever it is, there is truly a bubble around a dog and myself. I want them healthy. I want nobody in their way. They can go to the dog park on the weekend with their owner. That's fine. But when I am there, it's a job and it's a job to keep them healthy to, if they have anxiety issues to help work on that and get them in a more stable, mellow position in their world. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. And I think the owners for those <laughs> potential clients out there in SoCal, like I think for the owners own peace of mind, they want that. They dogs, are, we were just talking about leaving Clark for the first time. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, I gotta be honest, like I was on the trainer last night and I was just thinking about, Oh my God, like we're going to be away from him for a few days. And you have, have wonderful, competent people in your world yes, yes. who will love him. Right. Like so you, you have to, you have to <laughs> let that happen, right? you know? But I think it's, it's safe yeah. it's, to, to hear you speak like that. It's, it's good for owners to know, like when they go with race pace pups, like you're giving 100% of your focus and att attention and presence to the animal that's, that you're with. Yes. Not to, you know, socializing and not no. to like, well, maybe we'll introduce this dog. It's like, this is what you committed to with the owner and, and you're going to take care of the dog and they have that peace of mind. Yeah. And hopefully, I think that my clients after meeting me and establishing a relationship, because that is what happens. I'm not just there to exercise somebody's dog. I'm there to establish a relationship like I have with you two and with every other person I do business with. And there's a lot of trust that needs to have happen because the people who hire me love their dogs as if they are their children, period. And I understand that. And I give them that compassion and that love. And sometimes I feel like I'm their therapist too. Dog and human, <laughs> honestly, and I'm happy to do so. And I have had quite a few people ask about nutrition and the path that I take with regards to nutrition and uh, just bouncing ideas off each other, maybe steering them towards certain cookbooks. <laughs> oh, I like that. Oh, not the one in front of me. <laughs> but it's just, uh, it's a relationship. And I love it. It's so cool. Like, okay, so you're in service of these dogs. These dogs have given you purpose. They've taught yes. you patience. You're, um, you kind of scooted that question a little bit about how you brought patience into your life. I did. <laughs> that was unintentional. I promise. <laughs> of the, what the dogs have taught you, and we don't have to say patience, have you seen anything translate into your life? As far as patience goes with dogs, we can go back on that. Okay. I apologize if I went off on a tangent, but no, I it happens. It. We're just we're just here to bring it back. Nice. I okay. think there's a lot of people that, and I was one included, that used to think like, I'm not a patient person. I'm not a patient person, and I have my take on it. But I want to just see how it's yeah. translated for you. Okay, so let's go down the dog path then. I have dogs. Uh, I'll just 
take an example, one dog in particular, I was hired to calm their dog down. I believe exercise calms dogs. It was a process. Now, consistency was key. So when this dog would want to keep yanking away or go after another dog, and I would have to rein this in, internally, I may, maybe, I'm just a real person. So yes, I was frustrated that I felt I wasn't able to help this dog, but I was consistent and I would take a deep breath and I would calm down. And eventually, if you keep at something, whether it's dogs, family, uh, your relationship with your friends, if you're having any type of issue and you feel yourself getting a little heated internally, just stay calm and be consistent and this too will pass. And it happened with this particular dog went from mental crazy dog, always wanting to go after a bunny, go after a bird, go after a dog or a leaf. And me staying calm and consistent, obviously it didn't take long before my calm uh, outward behavior translated to the dog. So when I get home with my children, say if I couldn't help with math because I'm horrible at third grade math, yep, that's me. <laughs> Because who would use third grade math when you're oh, 40 years surprised. old? Oh, you'd be surprised. This was not the math I was taught at third grade. Holy cow. So if I find myself getting frustrated because my husband's not home, who's the math whiz of the family engineer, uh, and I can't do whatever long division problem it is. I know this sounds awful, but it's true. I just have to take a deep breath and realize that Practice, 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 consistency. It will happen and it'll click. And it does click for both of us. We can get so caught up in like, my husband's not home and he's the one that did that. And then all of a sudden it's like, this isn't fair. Why do I have to do the homework? This isn't my specialty. Like, I don't know long to, like, and things can like snowball. Like frustration can move really, really fast and snowball. But if you can get into that gap and you can take a break from right. the noise. Oh my God, I had this... I had this um, meditation about a month ago and you know, you can meditate for like a year straight and then there's like a nanosecond of wisdom that drop, drops in and you're like, whoa. And it was right before I came out of the meditation and I had written it down. Um, I think I remember it. It's, it said, if you want to turn down the noise, you must turn down the heat. It was the create, like, and then boom, my meditation timer went off. And I was oh, like, no. I just understood it immediately. It was like, if you want to turn down the noise in your head and the noise in your life and the noise of what you see in the world, reduce the friction of resisting what is. Why like, does everything sound so easy, yet this is so yeah, difficult for us to put ourselves in this calm place? Yeah, it was like, it was so clear to me, like, oh. don't resist what is don't create friction which is going to mm -hmm. create heat because that's going to create noise and so, it snowballs yeah and it right. snowballs so that's exactly what you're doing it's like you've learned from these dogs that if you if you don't press against like we push against what is like the resistance like oh this dog and blah 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 and it's oh it's the reflection of the like you could just really project out like why the situation's not fair but instead you take you you back up you take a breath, which is like the most responsible and skillful thing we can do as a human. Right. And you just yeah. go into what is, which is just like, okay, this is an amazing, sentient, worthy being at the end mm. of this leash. And this is my purpose that I'm serving. And, and to see now the dog calming, like... How does that, how do you yes. feel about that? Oh, I get so excited. Even today, <laughs> even today, I was with one of my dogs who was an anxious rescue dog. Wonderful, wonderful little guy. But we've worked consistently. Consistency seems to come up often with what I do and with, well, running, exercising, nutrition, doesn't matter. Consistency is just a key word, I think. But we were towards the end of our run and we were going downhill and he has fast little legs. He's awesome. Anyway, when we started, um, I don't know, four or five months ago, he would have gone crazy at the sight of any dog, anything. And 
there was a little white dog who turned around and saw us. And this dog went mental, of course. I mean, so mental that he was like backwards and like flopping in the air. And good old Hudson just looked at him. It was almost like he said, peace out. I'm out of here. And he just, he, we literally jog, not even a jog. It was pretty much a sprint at this point, right past him. He looked at this white dog that was going crazy and just said, yeah, like, I'm calm peace. and I've got this. And so we just cool. kept going. And those are my moments as a dog runner where I just say, yes, we've done it. We've done it. It's great. And so it's not just dogs who like to run. I work with so many different types and I tailor workouts towards each dog. So this is not a fun little job for me as a dog runner because it can be cute and fun. This is a mission and I'm here to help every single dog, whatever the reason is. And you're affecting like people's lives. <laughs> like you're affecting I'm people's lives. I'm noticing that. I'm That's noticing so that. so amazing. And it took that realization for me to say, okay, it's all right that my race times aren't as good as they were a couple years ago because I had this woman cry to me about how I fixed her dog. And when I think about that moment, that conversation, that's when I say, okay, so I was two minutes slower. Who cares? Yeah. Look what I'm doing during the week. I mean, I'm running 60 miles. There's no such thing as a taper with me. So again, <laughs> New York Marathon, no clue what's gonna happen. I'm gonna give it my all the most unconventional training. So, um, yeah, I don't really know how this is going to go. I love it. You're going to be doing like a 60 mile weekend. To, yeah. New I'll probably York. have quite a bit of like serious speed work <laughs> 20 times a week. Maybe I can sneak in a 10 miler. I don't know. It's going to be interesting and it's all about balance. And that's another word that obviously is huge with you two as well. Balance. Um, there's just our world that we live in is extremely hectic and chaotic. And if you don't have balance, whatever it is, you're going to just, you're going to, you're going to lose it. <laughs> how do you, how do you find balance? Your mom, your wife, your business owner, you're an athlete. I don't know. I don't have an answer. Um, that's just the actual answer is I don't know. I have learned to give myself time in the morning to get the day started with my children and get them fed and ready for school. I drop them off. I am that mom at school who always looks disheveled because I am always in running clothes. Um, when I pick them up, I smell and I'm in running clothes. I wish that some days I could show up in a nice dress and heels, but I don't. And that is my world. And after I drop them off, I work and I give my all to the dogs I come get my kids, feed my family, and try to eat as healthy as possible. And we laugh and do homework. And my husband and I are regular watchers of House Hunters International, one 22-minute episode, and then I'm done. Bedtime. <laughs> and we love it. And that's our bonding time is House Hunters International. I, I love know. it. Well, and Suzanne, in her podcast, she was talking about 20-minute time. Do you Similar. that part of it? Yes. That's and, your 20-minute time. And I was time. thinking about that also and how ours is... House Hunters International, and we laugh and we just have a great time for that short period before we're like, okay, we're good, tired. Good night. But it's wonderful, you know? It's whatever you need to do with your significant other, doesn't matter what it is, as long as you have some sort of bonding. And um, that's how we bond. I think it's, <laughs> it's so true. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. There is no one recipe for, you know, what works for BJ and I and what works for you and your husband and what works for Susanna and her husband. It's, it's, it's just, what do you enjoy that you do together? And whether it's house hunters international <laughs> or whether it's plug. reading a book or whether, you know, um, it's meditation bikes or meditation or right. whatever it is. It's just finding what you love and what the other, what your partner loves and doing that, spending time doing that together. And yes, you can love House Hunters International and it's okay. Have we you ever mentioned you this permission. show before on any of your podcasts? We have not. No, we have not. There's See, a first for everything. This is groundbreaking. <laughs> See, your story is groundbreaking. And there's so much oh, yeah. more I still want to get into. Um, but as far as the balance <laughs> goes, what I hear from the way that you <clears throat> explained your I don't know answer is 
that you find balance by by giving your all to whatever it is that you're doing in a moment. I do. And That's I've balance. Been, and I've been told that I do. I am an all-in person. I feel whatever it is. See, that's balance. So that You think? Oh, that would be my definition of balance. I always say like balance isn't about like, oh, work 4 hours and then lounge 4 hours and then run it's not about like this time sequence mm-hmm. or um, you know, equivalent blocks of doing different things. Balance is found in every moment. Balance has nothing to do with what your calendar looks like. Balance has everything to do with your relationship to what's happening in the moment. And can you okay. feel balanced within that moment? Even if there's things vying for your attention, thoughts or dogs or kids asking questions when you're trying to focus on something, if you're just if you're focused on what you're doing and then you stop, right? Just like taking a breath, you stop what you're focusing on, looking to answer the question, coming back to what you were doing. It's balance in the relationship, I think you find balance in the relationship to what you're doing in a moment. Yeah, and I would agree with that. Yeah. 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 It's not, yeah, it's not the whole, when people talk about balance. It's nothing that you can like put on a calendar and make a pie chart or like <laughs> yeah, 5% here, 5% yeah. here. Like that's just, that's just not realistic. Because you can have this perfect, like you can have this picture perfect pie chart, right? Like I do this 25% of the time and this 25% and this 25%. I'm so 25%. balanced. But that's not real. And you can be a total train wreck. <laughs> it's not real. No, it's, no, not. it's totally not it's real. Not. But you can be a total train wreck, right? So it's, it's, what is your relationship in the moment to what is happening. It's like stress, right? There's going to be stressors. We are stre- We are uh, subject to stressors all over the place. You know, I walked, was walking home from yoga yesterday just feeling like, ah, oh, I love that community. Amazing. I was feeling like all open in and my And who heart. honked at you. No, and I walked <laughs> by this woman who was smiling and I was like, oh, she's smiling. She's on the phone. And I walked by her and she's like, yeah, I'm glad you're suffering. I hope oh, you wow. die. Oh, And okay. she's smiling and I'm like, oh, like I just, that just cut like a knife. And so I felt her, like her nastiness. How did you get rid of it? Ooh. I just, I did the peace and harmony thing that we do. Like I just, ima- I just, I could feel like the, just the sharpness of what, <laughs> of what she Those, said yeah. and the disbelief of like, I thought she, I had this projection that she was happy because she was smiling. Oh, and, and then um, you heard her just, I heard her say something more. And, and of course, nasty. and then I was like, oh man, she's like totally <laughs> making hell for her own life by saying that to somebody else. And my first thing that I always do is just like my automatic now is just, I understand that she's suffering and that she's sad. You know, but that doesn't mean that I need to carry around her, her evilness that literally is as I was walking past her, she said it and I felt it. So right after yoga. Yeah. So I did this. That's too bad. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It was totally, it was totally imbalanced me. No, it's, um, it was my relationship to that. So I could have been like, Oh, I was coming out of yoga and this lady and she like ruined the rest of my day. But instead I did this healing technique where I remember her face so well. And I held that in my awareness and I said peace and harmony five times to her and then three times to me and I did that over and over and over again as I walked home until the feeling that I had the thoughts about what she said all of that stuff dissipated I wasn't giving it any fire I wasn't I mean I wasn't giving it any fuel and it dissipated it doesn't need to be a part of your world it has right. nothing to do with you. But you don't, don't need to bring that negativity into your and BJ's world. Right. But what I did get an incredible opportunity to do was to send this woman peace and harmony oh. in a moment that she clearly needed it. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, that's so, impressive. I was like, well, Man, I need to remember that. Yeah, it's a really good, it's a, it's a really a, good, because your initial reaction is at least in my experience has been like, oh my God, I've been wronged. Like they... Like they said something. You're on something. the attack yeah, right it, away. Yeah, it's just it's oh. your initial reaction. But then you just, you you turn it around. Topsy-turvy is what we call it. <laughs> yeah. And you're Tops like, turvy. okay, peace and harmony. Like, like show compassion for them. Peace and harmony, peace and harmony. Like they just, they don't know. They don't have the tools. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have she's the experience. Suffering. Yeah, she's, she's, she's suffering. So you, so you send them love. And in turn, you give yourself love too. So th- there's no wrong. It's just like, this is where we are. We're, we're all one. Yeah. Like we're all one and we continue this. And then eventually all those feelings and all that, like 
that tightness yeah. that comes up, that initial gut reaction starts to like fall away and you're like, oh. Because it's okay. not I like, like that. Like you, I am human and you know, and I've got a little edge to me. I'm from New England. And of course, like the first <laughs> thing I wanted to do was look at her and go, Life's a boomerang, lady, you're getting that right back. <laughs> you know, like like it's so easy her, to go but down. That's, her, that's creating like, more karma. That it's kind hurting of karma. her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's hurting and me. You. Yes. And it's hurting me too, yeah. you know? And sometimes when I see people walking their dogs and maybe they're just like the dog is pulling them and then there's like they're pulling the dog back and it's this struggle right like they're turning up the noise because they're creating all this friction and I want to just be like oh god no you're doing it wrong I just say you know what that's the match and it's perfect Mm -hmm. and I can just send them love and understand that those two and they'll they'll figure it out they'll figure it out it's not my job to figure it out for them yeah that's exactly (laughs) I can so relate to that because we as you agree start to, completely on this. You get that command, and you, if you say it louder and louder and louder, like it's going to somehow the it dog doesn't. is going to be like, "Oh yeah, I get it now." <laughs> Five times, extremely loud. Now I get it. Sit. Okay. I need to remember this <laughs> for parenting. <laughs> I need to remember. But the, it's not. That's not the case. It's like back to your back to your sound advice of just like be consistent, and it, it, it'll come around. Consistency yeah. is key. So sit doesn't work. Okay sit like try something else move the dog around and then come back and try and sit and reward him and it's like this process elevating your voice and, and, and giving your energy of like negativity and really feel it is not going to help the animal the animal's just going to no. be more scared just it's not going to make the connection so it's like a reset let's hit reset and you start again and come back around and you start, and you start again. again and sometimes it's again and again I'll have a, a dog sit if if he or she is doing something I don't want them to do. You sit, calm, go again. Sometimes it is literally sit, run, sit, run, sit, run, sit, and then it clicks, and then it's cool. Sounds like meditation. I like, think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except <laughs> this think, is don't the dog. think, don't think, think, don't think. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and yeah. then at some point it clicks, and maybe it just clicks for a second you know, out of a half an hour meditation, but it's the cumulative effect. It's the consistency of whatever we focus on expands. I need to work on meditation a little bit more. Yeah. We'll dive into the podcast. There's a lot we do. We talk a lot about it. Okay. Um, And I I haven't, I'll make sure to pick, (laughs) I'm picking like, uh, nutrition and moms that I've met once. (laughs) So now I need to work on the meditation. Yeah. We've got some good, actually the one we just launched yesterday's is, um, oh, neat. With, yeah, with uh, another meditation teacher, Golden Duffy. Okay. She's awesome. We've got two podcasts with her. So, um, all right, the dogs, um, nutrition, because this is the, the other thing that we love and we celebrate um, about you is that you are plant-based. Yes. And you're not perfect about it. And that's no, what I and love I'm even not going to try to say I am. <laughs> but if we have to go on a percentage scale, I don't know. Using percentages is kind of silly in my mind, but 95, five, <laughs> some weeks, 90, 10, but it is almost exclusively. And my body just, uh, performs better when I am strictly plant-based. And it's been an interesting road because I am not a trendy person whatsoever. I am just me. And I noticed without meaning to that I was reaching for the unsweetened, vanilla almond milk or the same unsweetened almond yogurts. And I just wasn't drinking milk. Uh, My gut was feeling a bit happier. And for my own running, it was helping. And I treat food now as fuel. I grew up, I was born in 1978. So I grew up on meat and potatoes and green beans from a can and I loved it and we all loved it and that was what we ate and I my best friend Mandy and I we would have Taco Bell tacos in between games and soccer tournaments we don't know now when we look back how the heck did we do that we would eat Taco Bell and then we'd go play competitive soccer and we'd wonder why we felt so nasty afterwards and you were good at it yeah I know I was good at eating Taco Bell too yeah (laughs) (laughs) I was but now I, I love this path and I'd say maybe six, eight, not quite a year that I've been completely off meat as well. Uh, I haven't eaten red meat in quite some time. I don't even know when the last time is. Um, and I just noticed that my body was 
wanting more tofu, more lentils. I started doing a little bit of research on my own. I made my own decisions. Nobody influenced me to eat a certain way. And I absolutely love the versatility of tofu. And it tastes good to me. I like that. See, I think that people have a hard time with tofu because they don't know what to do with it. Like, what's your favorite thing to do with it? Oh, my goodness. It's so simple. I can make um, sauces, and some of these sauces are in the Yogi Triathlete cookbook. (laughs) Anyway, um, that I can just saute some vegetables and uh, tofu, throw my sauce on there, sometimes some cocoa aminos. It's just really simple again there's i feel like my theme seems to be simple today uh but you can just do so much with tofu even breakfast scrambles easy throw some turmeric in there also make it look like eggs yes but it tastes really Mm -hmm. good really Um, good what's like your favorite tofu sauce like could you share one that you do like a i don't have a tofu sauce that i love i don't know do you have any recommendations oh no i thought you you made um oh oh sauce is not out of tofu i'm not using tofu for tofu i am i recently created uh i have no measurements i never live by measurements i just slop on thus the yogi traffic cookbook oh my god that's probably the the (laughs) beginnings right oh yeah i was i'm working on a pizza e-cookbook that we're gonna put out this summer just five recipe will be a download um, chickpea crust and uh no i don't make the crust i want to keep it simple, simple. Oh, i don't make the crust that? yeah <laughs> um but last night we were doing like the final testing i was really trying to dial in this i'll give you a little preview this butternut squash sauce that Yum. goes as the base and uh oh my god we were like i was messing up that pizza left and right i was like i didn't write any of this down i've made it like three times so last night was like the first time of recording it which means I'm going to probably make it another two or three times. You have you know? to. Yeah, to like get the measurements because I do, like you, I do everything without measuring it. Well, when it's a simple sauce, like the latest one that I've done is just tahini, peanut butter, and and it has to be good peanut butter. No junk with extra, na- there's so many Why fillers and nasty oils. In I don't know. Even Whole Foods yeah. organic Peanut butter. Has I am a label like stuff reader. In it. I I have a I have a problem. Yeah. I'm in the store for two hours because I think when actually when I ran into you I was probably staring at a label. That's just <laughs> yeah. What we I saw do. you were looking at the the cooler. You were just standing there. And we're like, I think that's Reese. We're like, I think that's Reese. Yeah. It was two me. minutes later. She's still standing there. Like, <laughs> that's me. But you missed a lot of time. We pulled up your picture. We're like, yeah. yeah she looks like that. that. You did. Yeah. She's still oh, reading that today. She's still oh, reading geez. that label. No. That's me. But the thing is, I'm really interested in learning about nutrition, and I I like it and I will spend time reading the label to see what fillers are added and you know sometimes I don't care I'm gonna eat it but tahini sauce peanut butter and cocoa aminos and that's it and I whip it up throw it on top of whatever saute it is it could be red pepper um snap pea um you name I mean I throw broccoli it could be asparagus it doesn't matter with with tofu throw that in and i'm golden nice i really have good breakfasts and good lunches i make sure that i eat well Mm -hmm. i have to and so so you're making the food in the house how does how does your family your children how is how are they coming to terms with well you know what i can say let's talk about my husband He is a rugby player from London, the oldest of four boys. They are a rough bunch. Love each other, but they tease. And my husband now went from being an uh, elliptical guy at the gym to running on the treadmill, to running outside, to beating me in races, to not eating meat. He's the one having his protein shakes with his uh, almond milk. And he says that without me trying, I've been a positive influence that way. And I know with my experience, I can't push any agenda on anyone. And I think that whatever is going to come is going to come. And he has dropped away. He's very fit. He is super happy. And he says, some of it has to do with my, uh, double chocolate Teff cookies that I make him (laughs) when he learned what Teff flour was. And his family is probably saying right now, what the hell is Teff flour? (laughs) But that's just how it is. And it's so 
it's really changed his world for the better nutrition. Um, and it's, it's been cool to see. That's so cool. So you're just, in, so, I mean, this is, this is how you make change. People just live the example, just live the example yep. of what you want to see, live the example of the health that you want to bring into the lives of others and being, being that energy, that higher energy, I mean, BJ and I are a perfect example, you know, and it goes both ways. Like you were doing triathlon before I did triathlon and I saw what he was doing and I liked it and I liked how fit and how good he felt. And, and then, you know, I was meditating and he wanted to see, like he wanted a piece of what was making me feel so good and, you know, wake up in the morning and wanting to sit quietly. And, you know, you followed me on the plant-based thing too. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's mutual. The agenda, the ne- not pushing an agenda. Not pushing I, an when agenda. I was in my darkest moments a couple of years ago, just deep, deep in sorrow because <laughs> of injury, like Jess gave me the greatest gift of just stepping back and like letting me have it, just letting me experience everything in it. And I came out to a, a totally different person. So what we can say to, to everybody out there is w- when you feel good and everything is working for you, yeah, it's great to sing the song and but pushing that agenda on others and especially those close to you can have that a negative a negative, negative effect. effect yeah yeah it can push them even further away it can cuz i think what you're doing to go back to that wisdom bomb that i got in meditation is like you're pushing against what is yeah. you know you're pushing against oh i want you to eat this way because i feel so good just keep doing what you're doing and and allow whatever is going to happen to unfold because we're not here to change anyone else we're here to live our lives and through living our lives and following what is in our hearts. And you're a perfect example of this. When you look at the community that you've created, the dogs and then the humans that live with those dogs and the changes that are being made because you're just showing up to run, you know, it's amazing. Like you're the living example of what we're talking about. You're not telling people, Oh, you need to do this with your dog and this with your dog. You're just doing what comes naturally. Like you are so, you are so living your purpose. You are, um, you found something that you, two things that you loved and you put them together. And that's how it happened. And that's how it happened. And it was actually after, I, th- I don't even know. I was so embarrassed. I don't even know what my time was, but it was something like four hours and 20 minute marathon, which when you're trained for Boston, 420 for quite a few people is amazing. But when you're training for a certain time and you're so down on yourself and it's silly and I see a woman with her dog on the beach running her dog and it's like that light bulb moment. And I thought, huh, I've always been a huge dog lover. I'm a runner. I wonder if this is something that exists. So I did my research didn't see anything, at least anything that anyone was promoting in San Diego, did my due diligence. I did whatever research I felt necessary to start. And it went from there. It was an easy process, but I wanted it to be a career decision that I could really make something out of people's lives. Not about just making money. It's about can I get dogs fit? Can, is this something that I could be onto? Because I don't see anything. I see dog walkers all the time. What I didn't know then was that it wasn't just going to be running dogs, that it was going to be relationships, that it was going to be dogs who are going to hide in a corner because they're too scared because they were beat at the ranch before they came to this owner. Mm-hmm. You have no clue what you're getting into, but I took that leap and I just, I cannot believe I did it. I'm so, so proud of what it's become and I love the people that I've met and there's been some clients that I've only run their dog once and I met them. It was a one and done and that's fine, but they opened their world to me for that one time and it was just, it's just, it's that cool. (laughs) We call that flow. Like in life when your purpose matches your profession or your passions. Doesn't happen often, I don't think. It doesn't happen. But you, but you tap down into something deep. And this is just the beginnings yeah. of it, too. There's so much going on in the works right now that I'm looking to make even more of a difference. But the fact that I start with an idea of just running dogs 
and to see what it's become already in such short time and how it's changed to me and just my outlook on life and the cool people I've met, like you guys. <laughs> but it's true. You meet some really cool people, different, yeah. that you wouldn't otherwise. I know. You're it's not like, in your own runner's bubble when yeah. you're not with your family. You're not just training and so focused on one thing. It's just you're open and you're willing to learn other ways of life also. And being willing to listen to those hits, right? So there's no difference between that hit that I got in meditation and the hit that you got on the beach that day. Yeah. You know, yeah, that you the same thing. had this moment where you like looked and saw this woman and you were pulled out of that like poor me where you could have stayed. For a marathon and I'm not a professional and I knew I would never would be yet I was so stupid so stupid to be so hard on myself. But it's so real. It's so it is. real. And we see it all the time with the athletes that we work with either, you know, um, that we know. So what in the community at large, like we see it, it's, it's epidemic how hard we are on ourselves. And so what I would say to that, like from a mindfulness standpoint is what about that performance or that training run or that moment that you're in, is there anything that you can pull out of that that would be seen as a victory? And that might even have just been like, I showed up and I got it done. That's hard. I think that's hard for it's so most people. Hard because the, the negativity is very heavy. And it's, right? it's easier to be negative in that moment than it is to come up with positives. So to switch that mindset and be able to nitpick, okay, well, like you said, I finished. Yes, I got up. I had really good coffee beforehand. That's cool. <laughs> right. I'm Whatever. alive. I, yes. I can run. Like my legs can move. I know. And it's like you try to it's find silly, all that gratitude. It? Yeah, but, 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 the, but the natural tendency is to go down that, that, that negative hole. And then everybody gets on board. The negative talk of like, I didn't have the race. Oh, and then the next yeah. person is like, oh, I didn't have my good race. Oh, and actually the course was long. Oh, and my nutrition wasn't. And then it's like, it snowballs, right? And this now you've got the whole team behind you. You've got, yeah, it was all a bad race. Like, it wasn't my best. And that's where you can, that's where we like to, to get in that gap and like stop that story. And find those small moments of gratitude. And yeah, and it's not easy. And I can tell you right now, it doesn't happen instantaneous. No. It does not happen... You have to be willing. You have to use every single bit of will and discipline that it takes you to train and get to the finish line of whatever it is that you're training for, that it does, if not more, to say, I did have a victory today. And even if you don't believe it, you got to start somewhere. But what I can tell you is that if you are willing to do that and you choose it, even if it feels like bullshit for years, eventually consistency the change happens and you, and you, it happens on a cellular Click. level. It happens on a cellular level. And all of a sudden you start to see the world differently. I can tell you, I've been in the darkest of the dark and I feel completely, um, my darkest of the dark is like nothing compared to what it used to be. Like my darkest of the dark now is probably like a good day 20 years ago. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, I have changed on a cellular level. I have changed my brain and people that I work with and people that I've seen in, in really, really putting mindfulness to, to work as athletes, we have that will and discipline to do it. And I understand that it might suck for a week or a year, but if you keep choosing it, if you are willing to get out of the like the whole oh my god it's like when I first started running and I was willing to keep at it yes. even though I couldn't run more than a quarter mile breathing that's what I had to work on that yes. technique is tough man yeah that was and a hard no one for me different. there's no <laughs> yeah. different it's just that we spend so we had mentioned the gym earlier and because we're teaching at these gyms and so I saw we, your schedule. Yeah, so we um, so we get memberships, which is amazing because BJ loves doing treadmill workouts, and so it's fun, right? It's like so, so amazing that we get free memberships. Don't be negative about the gym. No, I See? know. <laughs> Don't use the negativity right. towards gyms. You Absolutely. use it as a tool, and then you leave happy yeah. and then go on your way. But I was sitting there the other day, and I was doing a treadmill workout while <laughs> BJ was teaching, and I was looking around at everybody. They're all in there because they want to improve themselves. They want to feel better. 
better. They want to feel better in their bodies. They want to feel better about the way they look. And, you know, maybe I'm making a sweeping generalization, but I think for the most part, I'm on, I'm on point here. Maybe they're doing it because their health is in, in such poor condition that they have no other choice and maybe they're resisting it. But I thought, wow, if we all kept doing that, and then just in a moment when we got down on ourselves that we tried to find a victory in that moment, God, if we put those two things together, how could this whole, like everybody's experience and the way they move through life would change so profoundly. And I think that there would be less energy available to get everybody on that, you right. know, poor me mm -hmm. bus and create so much more. So right now we're, we live in this world where it's so easy to create a big negative bubble. Oh, I had such a bad, oh, and I hated those shoes and oh, that nutrition and my stomach and oh, me too. And right, it's like, oh my God, I can't. Like that's when you see me kind of walking across the street because I'm like, I can't be in that vibe. And no, then I'm doing the I'm not good. I'm doing not the good peace with that either. Been told meditation teachers like, walk away from it. Just walk away from but it. But because we're conditioned to say like, oh, well with my luck, I won't even qualify. Why have we been why do we buy into that crap when really as powerful we are as creators because we've created all this negativity we've created it all like we can shift it to be like oh well with my luck I'm going to qualify on the first try you better believe it that's right but that scene is like oh well she's so full of herself it's so strange people but, always have an answer for everything so yeah. just believe whatever it is that you want to on the positive side, obviously. We're not gonna go down the negative path, but if you own it, it can happen. Who cares what Absolutely. other people think? Who cares? I mean, trust me, I look horrendous day in and day out <laughs> when I go pick up my kids. I know this and I laugh about it with the aftercare ladies and I apologize, this is me again and I'll have mud on my boobs or you know, all over my shirt and my legs and that's just my reality. But I've had to learn to say, to apologize for my appearance because it's silly, this is my work attire, it's just my reality. But it's easy to say, oh, I'm sorry I look this way or, you know, that, again, that's negative. It really is. It may not seem it because I'm smiling and joking about it. But when I thought about that, I like, maybe it doesn't sound so good that I'm apologizing for how I look. You know, right. yeah. it's, out there. it's saying you're sending a message yeah, right to the universe right. saying like, I'm not worthy in the way that I'm showing up right now. When in fact, you just got done doing helping number families, one, what you love, what you're True. passionate about, what you feel, what you gain purpose from in your life and what's shaping and changing people's lives. And you show up and you say, I apologize. Right? It doesn't is make any that sense. that just Does ridiculous? Any, yeah. It or is. Or somebody saying like, oh, I apologize. I'm in a really good mood today and I'm dressed, <laughs> and I'm dressed super well, so I'm and sorry. And I look really good. <laughs> the same can be said. So it just... Yeah, you're right. Um, you're right. So uh, when I realized I was saying that to myself, that was another moment that I kind of had that aha. Uh -huh. Like, I am a very positive person by nature, but I'm apologizing for how I look? This is ridiculous. Yeah. It's silly. So... I don't apologize anymore. Good. I own it. I know. This is your just me. And your true self is taking you to the next level. And nobody else is like, probably like, whatever. Like, they're probably no. even noticing it. It's and the lady like in heels is dying to get into your shoes. <laughs> Literally. Actually, dying to get into your shoes. Possibly. Possibly. Um, I want to circle back just on, we didn't talk about our kids. Your, yes. Yes. Yeah, so what is their plant-based relationship? Like, how is that? We talked about your husband. My kids... I am lenient with them because I don't want to push them in a certain path. I am, we actually do our grocery shopping together, all of us. They know what they can get. I tell them labels. They read their labels. Um, my issue with my daughter is vegetables. My son, nothing. He's six and he'll eat anything and it's great. My daughter is still struggling with her vegetable love. I tried to get her to eat sweet corn the other day. It's so simple and easy and it's good, but... She doesn't like the texture. So you go down different paths. You keep trying different vegetables, but she does now make her own kale chips. So that's a score for me. I like that one. So it's just, a, it's a process and you guide them a certain direction uh, with her being eight, almost finishing third grade already. Uh, she makes her own decision. I 
she knows what happens when she goes to the birthday party and she stuffs her face with cake because I let her. I'm not going to say, you can't have that, you can't have that when 20 other kids are having it. That wouldn't be right, I don't feel. So I let her. And what does she do when she comes home after that party? She tells me, oh, I don't feel good. Maybe. It maybe was fun in the moment. And I don't feel good. My stomach hurts. And that's just how it is. And she knows that food is fuel. And sometimes if we go down a different path, it's not going to feel so great to your tummy later when you eat a certain way normally, and then you have junk food or you go out to McDonald's with a friend and then you start to hurt. I didn't have this growing up though. It's really strange. But you're letting her find her way and you're not telling her it's so different. Like people need to have their experience. And just because she's your daughter doesn't mean that she's not an individual person like she needs to have her experience yeah I think it's brilliant that you let her have her cake you know and allow her to feel like crap and eventually sometimes it feels great and it tastes wonderful every single time and and then maybe you have that sugar crash and then you're tired right or she'll figure it out on her own in the right no pushing nope I don't I don't push at all but I'm not cooking hamburgers at home (laughs) right we just don't I I am but they're not me (laughs) right so how do you handle that when you're cooking oh you're you're you don't no 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 oh no so yeah there's no hamburgers at our house um the burgers that I do make she won't touch the bean burgers I've tried Mm. it's okay so we go down a different area um but I just take it one day at a time and give our love and my son will eat a whole bucket of hummus and carrots and he he's he's fine I'm not worried about see it. there's the balance but he doesn't like salad there's, there's balance between the two of them there like she's yeah. kind of fighting you on things and he's not at all right so there's balance in there right and then there's the treats that I make or the cookies that I make and I don't use there's no refined sugar in my house um I'm pretty strict I think in that sense but I uh, still use maple syrup or I have oh I love maple syrup yeah man it's so good but (laughs) there's certain food items I just don't have in my house yeah maple syrup ended up being the key ingredient to the butternut squash sauce I made last night oh yeah Yeah, and the big you gotta make our banana bread uh that's like your number one everybody's favorite well, your banana bread, it's funny because that's... Oh, and this is another one, the jackfruit tacos. Oh, yeah, those are good. I love jackfruit. Yeah, I do too. And you can... Super easy. Make It's just like pulled pork. If somebody like pulled pork yep. and you just slip this, it's not like you're trying to um, con somebody into being a vegan. That's not it at no, all. But, but get- if you know ahead of time that this is not pork, then maybe you'll be negative about it and you won't be willing to try. Right. Whereas if you just assume you're eating a certain thing and you like it, and then yeah. after the fact, oh, okay. Yeah, like we're not trying to do the gotcha. You no, know, that's, I realized That's after... like hiding, to me, hiding vegetables or not telling my kids. Right. The, I just, that's just me. Right. Everybody is obviously doing whatever works for them, but um, I like everything out in the open. And mm-hmm. if you want it, great. If not, Well, I realized fine. that after that book was published, that that's great. nowhere... On that cover or inside or in the title, does it say that it's a vegan cookbook? <laughs> it doesn't, does it? It doesn't. No. And I had people who are like, is this 100% vegan? Like, I want to make sure it's vegan before I buy And I was like, oh my God, yeah, of course it is. Well, you weren't thinking. I wasn't thinking. You I was know, just thinking just like, here's some really awesome easy, recipes simple that have fast. fueled That's us to do pretty amazing things. So, I mean, I, I'm sure I haven't read through the narrative for a while there, but obviously, you know, it's like I'm a vegan lifestyle coach and yeah, I mean, that came across, but nowhere in the title or anything so I love that it's not like I'm trying to sneak one up on you because to me that is it's just high vibrational eating which happens to be vegan which happens happens, just happens to be vegan um all right so this is gonna blow you away we've already gone over an hour oh wow (laughs) (laughs) right I am the person I I listen I'm not used to sharing my (laughs) world because I think I'm just boring (laughs) I just run dogs and I am a full-time mom and wife and that's my world and I think that's what makes you so amazing because you're you're just doing incredible work in this uh in this world and it all it's just starting I know I want to hear more about it and actually (laughs) um I think I could, could do you if you have more time I'd like to do a um little podcast extra about this 
cool deal that you have um, going with competitor and uh, running in the shoes and doing reviews. And that, that just stuff. happened. That I know. Was just well, a we're gonna, random. We're gonna do a wonderful an, little uh, partnership. Friendship so we're here. gonna close up this conversation. Great. And then we're gonna record an extra for our Patreon supporters who are amazing. Um, we're in such deep thanks to them. And we're gonna talk about that and talk about uh, demoing shoes and because you're doing 60, 70 miles a week. So. Let's find out about what's going on with that. Um, anything else, Beach? Yeah, we want to know. So if you're in the SoCal area and you want to hook up with Race Pace Pops, what's the... Because I'm assuming you're taking on clients. I am. Okay. I am. And I am going to have um, other wonderful people working with me and do currently. But uh, reach out to me. My website is racepacepups.com. And uh, you can also find me on Instagram, like I found you too. And uh, it's at Race Pace Pups and also on Facebook. And I am not a social media person, I have to say. But on Instagram, I have enjoyed the people that I have met. I have I have clients that I have found me through Instagram. So I guess that's a wonderful outlet. It's how I met you too. Yeah. And it's awesome. You got to follow her on Instagram. It's the best. You, it'll bring a smile to your face when you see these silly dogs. Yeah. Oh, and there's And if you want to go to October 24th, 2017, <laughs> we see this beautiful golden retriever. Clark. Who Clark is happy. obviously your most favorite. So happy and so <laughs> stunningly handsome. And because we're always with him. I don't think you... Well, the, the other times you've been like out of town and you're like, why do you always oh, ask I, me when I'm out of town? I had a race one time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I thought about it. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. For I, this conversation was amazing. Oh, thank just, you. Thanks for having do. me. And Keep doing it. Yeah, I just am trying to spread the word about canine fitness. That's a wrap. Episode 107. We are so grateful for your ongoing support. Beach has been ramping up the Patreon community this week with daily vlogs. He's given the insider info on what's next for him and the deep scoop on his daily prep. So if you're a supporter and you haven't caught those videos yet, get over there and catch up. If you're interested in being in the know, then go to patreon.com forward slash yogi triathlete, where for a minimum pledge of $5, you'll get exclusive content, sneak peeks, and extras. We have an awesome extra with Kimberly up there right now. So definitely go check it out. We talk all about running shoes as she's got this awesome new gig as a reviewer with competitor. She shares her insight into the rules for wear and keys to recovery. All right, that's it, you guys. That is it for this week. We have some incredible interviews lined up for you over the next month, and I cannot wait to share more purpose and more inspiration with you. But remember, only you can put that into action. You are worthy of everything you envision for your life. And if it wasn't a possibility, you never would have thought of it in the first place. So get out there, grab your life, and give it a massive hug because this journey is for you. It is all yours to create.